Fortress of Comic News, episode 165. I am one of your hosts, Chris, alongside Mike. Hey. What is happening, Mike? Nothing. A whole lot of nothing. Uh, except if you're listening to the show, there's all something happening. Today we on the show, we have Alex Harris of Alex Harris Comics with an X dot com. So check that website out and uh, look forward to that cool interview. Other than that, uh, I finished Letter Kenny, so that's that's and that was like a week and like I don't know, seven seasons in a week, eight seasons. I don't even eight seasons. Uh, they're short seasons. They're only like eight episodes. Isn't that crazy how we say that now? Like, oh, <laughs> you finished a whole series in in a few days. Oh, those were short seasons. You know, like those aren't those aren't flash seasons. <laughs> it's like come on. Well, yeah, Either it's way, the, it's not too great. And then I finished it in like a week. It's the difference between like syndicated television and then just like, I don't want to say good television, but good television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that kind of segues us into this first little little uh, doozy here. Um, let, let me let me tell you about my week real quick. Oh, oh okay. Yes, I'm sorry. I, yeah, let's, how was your week, Chris? So I had a fantastic week. Oh. Because... This coming Wednesday, we're getting new comics, Mike. Yes. It's about time, you know? And actually, last week, I got new comics, too. We will talk about those at the end of the show. But more importantly, Mike, Mm -hmm. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake. Yeah. Coming weeks before my birthday. Oh, this is your birthday present just for you, man. All you kids out there, prepare to get schooled. And some Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Are you the guy that like I would play online against, and he would just he would do the manual tricks for like fifteen minutes and get like a fifty million score, and I wouldn't even I would like go to grind a rail, fall over, and that would be the match. Like those are the days. I, you know that meme of I forget the actor, but he's wearing a backwards hat and yeah, yeah Steve like, Buscemi, yeah, yeah Steve Buscemi, fellow Shemmy. kids, fellow hey, kids, fellow kids. That's yeah. me playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater. <laughs> That's a lot of us. <laughs> uh, someone Absolutely. had a theme of like the Simpsons guys. Uh, like Mo was dressed in like a skater. <laughs> it's like everybody coming back to pro skater. Yeah, that's super exciting. I mean, those those so, games, just the soundtrack alone. Like I'll listen to the sound. I still listen to the soundtrack of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater too. Uh, well, yeah. that's great because uh, not only is most of the original soundtrack coming back, mm-hmm. but they released it on Spotify too. So you can just listen to the soundtrack on Spotify right now. Like that's, uh, I'm so excited. I'm I, I'm a Spotify user. I I pay for that premium, so I'm I'm in it. Oh yeah, that's awesome. I am a little sad though um, that uh, Pod Racing was delayed on the Switch. So you know, <laughs> yeah, bal- balance in all things. You know, good with the bad. It. I mean, I'd rather have a polished Pod Racing game than a crappy Pod Racing game. But the fact that it was supposed to come out this month and now it's not here is kind of sad so <sighs> feels good bring us down mike yeah i just had to you had to bring you down to my level before we start off <laughs> speaking of bringing us down <laughs> yeah i feel like you know we couldn't be on a high note to talk about this next segment because of how god awful it was um yeah we got the final trailer for the star girl show which you know was supposed to, it's i don't know releasing on dc tv and the cw at the same time now um uh, I mean, uh, Luke Wilson's in it, so uh, there's that, which is kind of weird to see him in a role that's like, a, like a famous actor in the role of like cheesiness from the CW. It's just weird. It's just it, I don't know how I feel about it, especially in, if I, I don't know how I feel about it in a trailer. I don't know how I feel I'm gonna. It's gonna be even worse with the show, I think. But uh, and the the opening sequence in that trailer where Joe McHale's a cracking jokes, a star yeah. man, like cringeworthy. Yeah. I already I am Joe not McHale. a big fan of Joe McHale. Oh, uh, we'll just, see. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you don't like Joe McHale, then that's. I mean, I I've been a fan of Joe McHale since the Soup days. So and then everybody's like, oh, but there's that other. I don't know what was that other video show that everybody loved more than Joe McHale's. I can't remember. Well, it wasn't wild and out. It was something else with a guy who was just like Joe McHale. But anyways, um, yeah, the writing is atrocious. So, yeah, it definitely feels like a CW show. 
Yeah, I was hoping it wasn't because they were talking about the budget and everything, and it seems like the budget just went to the actors that are playing these roles. Hey, all you DC fans, remember how Jeff Johns was working on this instead of comics? Uh, yeah, remember that. Oh, no. Who knows? I mean, honestly, you, you, it could be a terrible trailer and a good show. It could be. I have zero interest in watching this, though. So I, I'm going to watch the pilot. I'll watch the pilot. Just it, You'll probably talk me into watching the pilot because you'll be like, it's so good. And I'll watch no, it. Like, I don't say I that about everything. So much, Mike. I don't say that about everything. I don't say everything's so good, all right? Like, <laughs> uh, I just get like, frustration out. Yeah, I understand. Well, I don't, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, okay, now the exciting news. There's some new Mandalorian castings going on. Uh, Katie Sakoff has been cast as a live action version of Bo Katan Krize. Is that a. Is Kreese? Kreese? Bo Katan Kreese? I don't know who that is in the Star Wars universe. You have to. Uh, um, oh, she plays the character in Rebels and Clone Wars. Okay, so I haven't met that character yet. Yeah, she's a Mandalorian character, and okay. you meet her near the end of Clone Wars. Uh, she plays a bit of a role in Rebels, mm-hmm. um, but Kate plays the the voice of her as well. And you know Kate Sakoff because she was in um, Battlestar Galactica. She was uh, one of the she was the blonde woman who was one of the what they call the cyborgs. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't it's know. been so long since I watched that. Yeah. Sorry, but um. Yeah, so that's where she's from. So she obviously yeah. has the build to play something like this as well. So yeah, she um was she in Flash too for a little bit? She might have had an appearance in Flash. I feel like but. I think she might have. Um, I don't know she's jumped around a lot. Yeah. Also, uh, Timmy Timothy Oliphant joins the cast as an undisclosed role. There's so many memes of him going around the internet because he was the uh, was what was that show we did a see uh, FX Justified. Where he was like yeah. the, uh, <laughs> he's like the cowboy gunslinger. They're like, if if he's not wearing like a cowboy hat, like gunslinging, I, I don't know who he could be. I mean, do you have any speculation? He's probably a bounty hunter, I would assume, right? I mean, he it just fits the bill. Yeah. yeah. Um. When you say undisclosed character in the Star Wars universe, like, yeah. Um. It could be anything. It could be a, what you don't know. <laughs> he's such a good actor, though. It honestly doesn't matter. I mean, it's just going to be. And I be could. I could talk a little bit about this because the new episode of the the um, Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian, came out, and they were talking about the characters. And um, uh, one of the guys who, goddamn, I'm zoning on names today, but one of the characters that ends up being in the entire series, he was supposed to be a alien who was there for three episodes and then dies. So it's like, mm-hmm. I you don't know exactly who's going to be who this guy's going to play. So. Okay. Who knows? They might just make him like a, a Mandalorian and or uh, and give him a helmet, and we'll never see his face. They should just make him Clint Eastwood and <laughs> run out there with pistols. Yeah, I, I make him a gunslinger. Like <laughs> it'd be awesome. Uh, yeah. So after many rumors, Jeff Lemire's Sweet Tooth has officially been picked up by Netflix. Uh, Christian Convery will play Gus. James Brolin will be the narrator. Um. Also cast is Will Forte, Nanso Anozi, and Adil Akhtar. I don't. I don't think I read Sweet Tooth. Did you read Sweet Tooth? I never did, which is like one of the few Lemire things I haven't read. And um, it's the one that gets picked up. Can you like? We've read like a lot of his stuff, and a lot of his stuff's great. So I'm sure this is great too. But it's like, yeah, just this one went under the radar for me. Yeah, it's on my list of like really want to read. Um, it might even be the next thing I read after. Um, I finish. What was the series I started? Trans Metropolitan. Oh. oh, you started that? Yes, because oh. my uh, other co-host Joe has been bugging me forever to read it. So that might be after I finish Trans uh, Met. Assuming I enjoy it, because I'm only like three issues in. But um, I'll read Sweet Tooth because yeah, I've read everything by Jeff Lemire, and I have read Sweet Tooth, and that's like one of his biggest solo properties um cw has announced that all the original programming has been pushed to 2021 which is which is pretty crazy uh also they have purchased the television rights to dc universe swamp thing 
so weird. They're like purchasing rights from themselves, I guess. I don't really know. And will air the entire season to fill out their 2020 schedule. I think this is great. Give, I mean, I'm, 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 yeah, show that Swamp Thing show off. I think it's a good idea to do that. Hopefully, maybe there's more in store there for when they do this uh, Justice League Dark series. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not watching anything CW anymore, so right. this doesn't affect me. But I'm behind uh, on The Flash, and I have good knowledge from a good friend that the season finale of Flash was kind of meh. So, well, honestly... I, ended, yeah. like, halfway through the season. That, right. I mean, it's another... And I will say this. I'm still, like, wholehearted. I'm, like, I'm going down with the ship with this one and saying that the CW shows ended at the end of the crisis when they're all sitting around the the Justice League table in the Fortress of Solitude. Or not Fortress of Solitude. Um, uh, anyway, why, why? Is it? Or, no. No. Hall of Justice. Hall of Justice. Holy crap. I just had a huge brain fart there. Sitting in the Hall of Justice <laughs> around the table with like Martian Manhunter and stuff, just let the shows end there. That's where I think it's a perfect ending. You don't need anything else. Reboot the whole... Uh, whatever characters you want to do, reboot it. Make it not CW. Um, that, for me, that's where the that all ended. Uh, it's so epic. That, Arrow, Arrow dies. Like you have, you have all this drama going on. It's great. End it there. And also, that's just like when they started Flash, That's that was the end point. Like, yeah. From day one, that was crisis. the end point. It was a good yeah. crisis. We got that. Um, but to Swamp Thing, what I kind of hope will happen here is that people will watch it, people will yep. love it, mm-hmm. and we'll see it get either picked up for another season to give it another shot, or maybe even switch over to HBO Max and be a part of that whole Just League Dark thing. Yeah, I'm hoping to get some popularity, publicity. I- That'd be great. Yeah, I'm hoping something happens because uh, that was a good series, and it kind of it quote unquote failed on a technicality, which is kind of bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really does suck that that happened. Uh, what are we watching for movies? I because of all the talk last week, I, I watched uh, Mad Max Fury Road. I had to; it just had to be done. I, I mean, everybody knows how much I gush about this movie. Epic, all proportions. It's just a great movie. Did you watch anything? Uh, just, I mean, that DC Gallery thing was really good. Yeah. Um, it was going through with all the actors and kind of the same style as the other two. It was a roundtable discussion and they're talking about their characters. I really like that. Um, other than that, just like re quote unquote reruns, which is really just me going through Netflix and watching old shows as I fall mm-hmm. asleep. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a busy week, so not much. I'm still sticking with that new Rick and Morty show, but it's like I'm a few episodes in, um, and it just it just still feels like Rick and Morty. <laughs> you know, it's just that voice, man. That Rick, the Rick's voice is what does it. You know, it's tough. Yeah, I want to get more into that. Uh, yeah, but it, I I I mean, there's no reason not to talk about it. I fit, I've been writing um, issue three of Battle Monsters, so that's been uh, my week, mm-hmm. and I finished it uh, this morning quote-unquote, because I still got to go back and uh, revise it. But So that's all I've been doing all week, other than mm-hmm. like work and family stuff, so I haven't had a chance to watch shit. <laughs> oh, it's almost like you're sharing the, you know, the the troubled artist-creator things going on now. It's like, oh man, I have deadlines, and gotta get these, gotta get these things done. Yeah. Yeah. And I literally had to take a day off because I wrote something and I was just ashamed of what I had done. I had to walk away from it. <laughs> wow. Damn. I'd never had that feeling before where I was just like, I wrote it. I'm just like, what? I can't believe I just did that. And like saved and left and was like, I can't write today. Like, like what I just did is awful and I'm terrible for doing it. Wow. You'll all find out in the future. <laughs> Great. If that's not, a, if that's not a, a hook to buy more books, I don't know what is. I'm sold. But, you know, let's jump to this awesome interview we have with Alex Harris and, uh, We'll see everybody on the other side. And welcome back, everybody. We want to welcome to the show Alex Harris. Welcome to the show, Alex. Hey, guys. Hey. Thanks for being here, man. And uh, like we always do with all our guests, before we talk about some of the cool stuff you're doing, uh, we want to just jump into your origin in comics. Have you always read comics? Were you always a comics fan? Some people weren't, surprisingly. So yeah. I, like, yeah. I like doing this question. So where did it all begin for you? Um. 
definitely pretty much lifelong comic fan. I, I had two older brothers. They both read comics. They got me into it. And I grew up in the time of like the perfect synergy between toys, cartoons, and comics. You know, there was G.I. Joe, Transformers, yep. eventually Ninja Turtles, all that stuff. So yeah, pretty much started into comics right away. Um, and just my brother could draw, so I wanted to draw. And that mm -hmm. just kind of went from there. Awesome. So you're in like the Holy Trinity era of like, oh, there's an action figure of it. There's a show. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. And now there's a comic. And sometimes the action figures come with a comic. It was like, man, that was yeah. the best time. <laughs> I, I awesome. remember when like the new toy would come out and then the car, the episode would ha come out that that character has to be able to beat up somebody else. Yep. To try and sell that toy. I remember. Oh, yeah. That. <laughs> they got to make it popular for a little bit. Right, least. right. Awesome. So, and then you, uh, when did you start Loan, your webcomic? Let's talk about uh, that. That was about far too long ago, considering how few of it, few webcomics of it have I put out. Um, mm -hmm. I want to say probably like six or seven years ago. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, I just made like one little strip for fun and then just kept doing it. And uh, my plan was to do it weekly. It never got to weekly. Mm -hmm. as I would say bi-monthly for the, for the most part. And then, uh, then it just kind of, I kind of felt like I was kind of getting a uh, pigeonholed in terms of like mm -hmm. it, the audience for stuff like that is surprisingly, it exists, but it's hard to find. Mm -hmm. yeah kind of like comic strip kind of calvin and hobbsy kind of thing um so it was really hard for me to kind of pull people into it um and i also felt like it made it seem like i could only really do that kind of art and that kind of story so i kind of i don't feel great about it but i kind of lost interest in it for mm. at a point but i'm gonna bring it back so yeah. cool um yeah and especially for uh it's interesting because I mean it's it's a free comic, right? So you think people would be yeah. grabbing at it, but it's it's almost hard to get that fan base you're right. saying, to reach out. I to mean, people. I'm I'm sure there's an audience for it. I, the funny thing is now um, I've I've uh, hooked up with this group of people called the Boston Comics Roundtable, mm -hmm. um, which is just a bunch of creators who live in the Boston area, and none of them make traditional superhero comics. Like, oh, nothing. cool. Um, and now I'm like, wow, they. they I, this would have fit with them, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, but at the time, it was really hard for me to find people who were into it. You know, I would do like I would did for a while. I did Boston Comic Con. Yep. And I was like the only like non superhero y guy in the. In the world. <laughs> and I love superhero comics, but right, I was just, right. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Chris and I talk about it a lot too. I mean, I we're I mean, Image is super popular now, but there's there's right. still like a. I think there's still some growth with non superhero comics. I think people are starting to venture out, at least in the last few years or so. I'm yeah, sure see some yeah. growth there. Um, I do like. I, I read through some alone. I like how. I mean, I obviously I can connect with the first one. It's like, yeah, week one of getting fit, and he orders a pizza at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> so, that was supposed to be a whole like series of of Lone gets fit. Mm -hmm. uh, which will continue now that I'm finally bringing it back, but cool. But yeah. Um, so let's talk about Apocalyptic Cop. Can you break that down for us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll completely for no reason at all. I'll explain the real origin behind it. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that's good. You do you guys remember that? You remember those movies like Transmorphers and like? Oh yeah. That would be on Sci Fi Channel by the Asylum. Yep. Yep. I was talking to a friend once about how. Like, I feel like that's such a wasted opportunity if you gave someone who really... Because, like, back in, like, the 80s and stuff like that, you had people like James Cameron and stuff like that working for, you know, uh, Roger Corman. You had all these, like, really talented people mm -hmm. working for these, like, B-movie companies. And so oh, you yeah. get these really, like, unique B-movies that were very imaginative in a lot of ways, even if they were rip-offs of something else. Yep. And then you have The Asylum, who makes transmorphers and stuff and i was like man i feel like if they gave me the money and said can you make a transformers ripoff it'd probably be pretty fun even if it was bad yeah yeah but like and so someone said well what would you make if they um gave you the money to do that and i was like oh so i just like wrote down a list of things and then that turned into this like 60 page script for apocalyptic cop mm -hmm. and uh that i was originally determined to make as a movie with no money whatsoever and Everyone I knew told me I was insane. So eventually it just disappeared. 
Um, but then one day I was like, you know, if I want to make a comic that shows like a completely different skill set than loan, you know, this would probably be it. So I tried to kind of brought it back and turn it into a, a comic story. But it's, I guess the easiest way to describe it would be Robocop meets Mad Max meets Chud. Oh. He has ever seen Chud? <laughs> no. No, that's the one in that group I haven't seen. No. Uh, it stands for Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. Okay. Um, it has an interesting cast of people on it. At one point it was free on Prime. It might still be. Um, but it's pretty much just like monsters living in the New York City sewer that come up and attack people. The Simpsons used to make fun of it a lot. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. I've definitely seen a reference. Yeah, one time Homer was like, oh... I, he hates New York because he ran into chuds and all this stuff. <laughs> um, and that's why Kevin Smith will call people chuds. It, yeah. It yeah. Took over yeah. for a little while. It, but um, yeah. So disgusting mutants, toxic waste mutants kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a mix of all those things. So it's, it's like, it's it. almost like your uh, love letter to that. And like the, the B movies as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, that's like the B movie. The, the, I mean, it's interesting to hear like Bruce Campbell talk about him because that's like my my you know me being a fan of B movies that's kind of where it is. It's just like the Bruce Campbell movies are awesome, uh, like right. you know, the Bubba Hotep and all that stuff. But yeah, um, that's kind of where I stopped. But there's there's so many more things to watch and like the amount of money put into that stuff and not put into it. You know the cheesy parts of it, but it's right. it's a really interesting fan base and movies that come out of that. Um, so it seems like you kind of shared that with this comic though too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely trying to kind of channel kind of a mixture of all that B movie sci-fi ridiculousness with kind of the, um, like the, I also kind of try to think of it as like a toy line, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like what, would this be fun if there were toys of it too? Um, so it's kind of a mixture of all that stuff put together, pretty much just an excuse to have, you know, a big, robot character shoot a bunch of mutant zombie kind of things and yeah you know, what can go wrong with that sold <laughs> right yeah. is that available in a trade or no it uh i i i've recently finally started working on pages um but i'm kind of taking my time with it ideally once i have like a like while i once i finish pages i'll probably just put each page online um currently i just try i'm just trying to do i think it's about a 15 page um, like one shot comic, mm-hmm. and then ideally I'll kind of try to use that to pitch it out and maybe then turn it to the actual six issue series. Um, yeah. but yeah, it'll probably get posted page by page online and then eventually get printed. Cool. Yeah. So at, w- at what point do you, uh, meet up with the guys at the tick and start doing backup stories for them? Uh, so, so my, my friend, Brendan, um, worked at the um, the Brockton New England Comics, mm-hmm. and the one of the guys who works there, this guy Ralph, is an editor on the Tick Comics, and they were looking for people, and he mentioned it to Brendan, and Brendan was like, "Oh, my friend Alex makes comics, and he actually loves the Tick, so maybe he would want to do something." Yeah. Um, and because I I love the Endland the 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 Ben Evelyn run of the Tick mm-hmm. comics. Cause uh, I remember like, he was like a hero to me because he was from Massachusetts. Yeah. Right. He was a kid who made comics. It was really yeah. exciting. Um, so I was like, Oh yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So me and Brendan came up with some pitches uh, and we sent them in and they ended up accepting one. It was just, like a six page short story. Um, we got to introduce our character though, which was exciting. This character Lime, who was supposed to be like a, Thick, not at all like Venom, um, <laughs> Spider Man in yeah. any capacity. Right, complete coincidence. Um, but uh, and so they they let us do that, which was cool. But it was only like six pages. Um, I didn't get any writing credit, which was a bummer. Mm. But um, I got, but I did get art credit. Um, <laughs> through that, and then a little while after that, we we pitched a bunch of other. Uh, story ideas that didn't get picked up and uh, and then they did a whole new series with Colin Bunn mm-hmm. you guys see this I somehow know. they got Colin Bunn to co-write a, 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 like a tick origin mm-hmm. um, 
And then I tried to pitch another Zeke Origin, which they never replied to. But, you know. And then eventually this guy who, in those Colin Bunn comics, they had backup stories in each one. And this guy, Jeff McClelland, uh, wrote pretty much all of them. And they needed an artist with, like, two weeks' notice. And so they reached out to me and asked if I would draw uh, this Jeff McClelland story. So I did that in, like, a weekend where I was working like two and a half jobs and traveling to wedding venues because we were getting married. Um, but I managed to finish that and that was it. Uh, I haven't done anything with them since. Um, but yeah, I got to do those two. That was exciting. <laughs> so right now your, your, mo- your focus is going to be on the apocalyptic op, getting those pages out. And- yeah. Oh, I'm also doing... Um, that same thing I mentioned earlier with a uh, Boston comics round table, they do these anthology comics and they're doing one called starbound. That's like a little like science fiction anthology. And I have a four page story in that coming out. It has story has nothing to do with anything. It's just a random one off story. Awesome. And uh, where can we send our listeners if they want to follow you and the stuff you're doing? Um, yeah, I, it's Alex Harris comics. Comics with an X, uh, because I only had so many character limits. Uh, my wife made fun of me when I told her what the Twitter handle was, and I was like, I, I, I can't go to CS. Uh, it's too long. Um, That's awesome. But uh, it's Alex Harris Comics on Twitter, Instagram, and alexharriscomics.com. It's, it's all the same. Awesome. Yeah, well, thanks for being on the show, man. Uh, Thank you. We'll be back when uh, we get to some pages of Apocalyptic Cop out. <laughs> Absolutely, when I actually have some. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Yeah, so check him out, Alex Harris Comics with an X.com. Check it all out, what he's doing, and uh, hopefully we'll hear more from him when he releases some of those pages. Yeah, when it's written with an X, you know it's extreme. Yeah, extreme. Um, all right, so we got quite a bit of comic book news. Let's uh, let's just jump right into it. I this got a lot is, of thoughts on this news. Yeah, this is getting kind of weird. Uh, DC announced that it is eliminating the six-day exclusivity window direct market shops have for original graphic novels and collections. Now all bookstores will receive this content and date with comic shops. That's so they're sticking it to the comic shops. Why? Why do they? Why are they doing that? Kind of. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how many people are really just like, oh, it comes out six days earlier at the comic shop. I got to get it. Right. But at the same time, like, it's kind of, to me, just a, an act of good faith mm-hmm. to be like, hey, you guys get a little bit early. Right. It's it's a weird decision in my eyes. I I don't understand why. A part of me thinks it's a part of the next chunk of news in that they're I'm sure bookstores have a Tuesday release date on everything. And that's part of the reason why it's a six day. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about the next one, it'll make more sense. But with them switching their release dates, maybe that's part of it. But I feel like you got to give the comic shops a little bit of an edge. (laughs) Yeah, right. Well, and now DC has approved the release of their weekly comics on Tuesday. What's what is happening? What, What is what is the advantage? I don't get it. I mean, Tuesday is like the the media release date. Yeah, because that's when video games come out. That's when movies come out. I'm pretty sure it's when books come out. Right. So yeah, like parody with everything else, but I don't know. Wednesday's been a new comic book day. Right. Wednesday. It's always been Wednesday, and the thing about it is, like, it was in the middle of the week. It, like, breaks up the week, you know. Yeah. And Tuesday, also, t- Tuesday doesn't break up the week. You got the rest of the week after Tuesday. Yeah. And also, DC, like, it ruins my, like, new comic day post. Like, right. What am I supposed to do? Put Tuesday and Wednesday? <laughs> what the hell are you doing to me? You think people are going to follow them over to Tuesday? Like, what, I, it's interesting. I, I Unless everyone else follows suit, this isn't, I mean, it, maybe they hold it to Tuesday, but, and there are fans like this, but I don't think there's a ton of fans like this that only buy DC or right. only buy Marvel. And I know there are some out there. But I think most people are just like, well, okay, so Batman comes out on Tuesday, but Avengers comes out on Wednesday. I'll just go to the comic shop Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll just, I'm will just i going to get all my books on Wednesday still. Yeah, especially if you're a poll list owner. Like, okay, it sits another day. Yeah. It just seems like that DC is really co- committing to this like self-distribution thing, and they're like, oh, wow. 
these things are really complicated. We need to simplify them. Okay, we can only distribute to everybody at one time, and oh, to make it more convenient for us, we're going to change it to Tuesdays. <laughs> I yeah, and I also think that DC is really using this opportunity to try to get a leg up on Marvel because Marvel has had some policies that aren't great through all of this, right. mm-hmm. um, and DC's kind of won this coronavirus war. If you want to call it that, um, right. and so, you know, self distributing. Um, helping out the comic shops, all that stuff they've had over heels done better. Um, I think it's funny too that the the past two weeks they released books through their own distribution warehouse. Mm-hmm. Those books were supposed to come out next week through Diamond. Guess what? DC didn't have enough printed for Diamond for next week. Their books. So yeah, I think you're right on the them trying to push this distribution model and. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think a part of it is they're trying things to try to win this battle and maybe gain some confidence from the retailers again, but it's crazy. It's changing week by week here. Um, They've also canceled the monthly series, the Terrifics. Uh, They released the last three issues digitally. So I know you were enjoying that series. Yeah. Even after Lemire left, the book was still good. I mean, it was fun. It was a little wacky and different, but I enjoyed it. Um, it sucks. I mean, we didn't talk about it last week, but Marvel did the same thing last week. So, like, mm-hmm. a couple books they had are releasing digital only for the last couple issues, and one of them's uh, Ravencroft that I was reading regularly. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's like, I don't know. It's got to be something that we don't know about um, the actual printing of the book and blah, 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 blah with all the apocalypse going on. Mm-hmm. But it's just it's disappointing because there were books I'm enjoying and I'll still read them digitally. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely um, shaking things up. This, this seems like more of a cash grab. Dark Knight's Death Metal has been expanded. Uh, the series will now be seven issues along with two one shot specials. The first one shot is called Dark Knight's Death Metal Guidebook and will include stories. It'll include stories from Scott Snyder, James Tinney, and the Fourth, Chip Zdarsky, Josh Williamson and more. The second, called Dark Knight's Death Metal Legends of the Dark Knights. Wait a second. Dark Knight's Death Metal Legends of the Dark Knights. All right. We, these that's, these titles can't get any longer. That's a Star Wars title, if I ever Yeah, one. that is definitely... Yes. <laughs> it contains stories from, uh, yeah, Warren Ellis, James Tinney the Fourth, Scott Snyder, Garth Ennis, which is awesome. Garth Ennis writing a uh, crazy Batman story. Frank Thierry and many more bowls will be released in August. So basically they're like, Hey, we got a bunch of writers that want to do some stuff. We're going to throw them on these books. Um, I hope they're good. I just hope they're, there's good content there and it's not just a cash grab. Uh, I mean, well, a, it is a cash grab, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a cash grab, but it works because I'll buy all nine issues. Um, I, what was the one I was, so the guidebook, I'm not so sure about. Like they said, it's going to be yeah. kind of lead into what's going on with issue three, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Legend of the Dark Knights, I think, is a cool idea because what they're doing is taking different dark multiverse Batmans and telling like an anthology stories mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. And if I'm remembering correctly, it's Warren Ellis who's doing the... There's going to be a Batman who's also a dinosaur. Oh man! And he's doing that story, so that I was like, "War! That is a War and Alice story. That's amazing." Yeah. So that one, I'm actually kind of excited for. I think it's a cool idea to add to this. What about Garth Ennis? Which one he is he doing? I don't. I don't know. Well, the articles I read were pointing out the War and Alice one. Uh, I want to um, know what Garth. How how is Garth Ennis going to write a Batman story? It's going to be crazy. And it's yeah, like there's so many. I mean, they could do anything really. Yeah. Yeah, honestly. Oh, I, I'm I'm excited for this series. This this next one's a joke. DC has delayed Batman: The Three Jokers to August. I don't think we're, this is, I mean, does anyone well, care about happens. this? This does this does anyone care about the story anymore? Like it's it's this story is so far out of continuity that it just it doesn't even matter. It. Here's my thing. I do care because yeah. when it was announced, I'm like, I really want this. Bu-, like I wanted it to happen. Right. And I thought it was a cool idea. Now it's it's been so far flung into the future that I don't even think this could come out in August. Right. It like it was originally was. supposed to come out like next month, I believe. Yeah. So it was really supposed to come out like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then really, it was supposed it was to come out next years. month. 
Yeah. It's like, okay, I followed you. Now you're delaying it to August and blaming the coronavirus. I'm just like, okay, if it's not here August, then I it's never coming out. Yeah. It's it's going to be a situation like, <laughs> Jeff Johns, like uh, Doomsday Clock, where I don't believe it until I see it on the shelf now. Right. Like, that book does then, not like, exist until I see it. Then it's like, okay, well, now the continuity has changed so much in the last two years that it's like, how does this even fit? And how is this, how is the quality of the story even going to hold up? You know what I mean? And yeah. And if you want to get real nerdy about DC shit, like they're all, but canceling this whole five G thing. Right. Like they've pretty much said like, Oh yeah, we don't know if that's going to happen. And I, I just think there's kind of a continuity wise. I think there's a bit of a mess because I think there was a split about five G and that was part of the reason that um, Didio was, you know, quit. Mm-hmm. And now we're seeing that the people left behind were kind of like, yeah, that was a stupid idea. And nobody knows where to go forward. And they really need leadership. And I love Jim Lee, but <laughs> I don't know if Jim Lee is the continuity leadership you need. I feel like he was the guy bringing in artists be like, Hey man, like let's come draw Batman with me. Like, right. Whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. So yeah, I hope this book happens, but it's, I don't think it's going to, I really yeah. don't. Uh, Jeff Lemire bringing back sweet tooth at DC later this year. So that's pretty exciting. I'll probably have to catch up before that happens. Um, not a whole lot of controversy behind that news. Wow. That was some fresh news, you know? Yeah, good for yeah. Jeff Lemire. Yeah, good for Jeff Lemire. Good job, DC. Uh, it's a Mar- cash grab, but good for yeah, Jeff Lemire. Yeah, good job. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel announced that fan favorite villain Maestro, is he a fan favorite? Yes. Okay. Is getting his own series this year written by Peter David and Dale Keown will, with art by German Peralta. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, Maestro is getting his own series. See, he is a fan favorite, but Maestro to me was like a one punch villain. Yeah, and after that, I just didn't care. Like, <laughs> I, I like I liked that story. I, I think it was a good story. It was a cool like alternate future for the Hulk. But do, do we need to keep revisiting it? I don't know. But, but I'm sure there's a ton of people out there telling me I'm an idiot right now. So, um, this is pretty cool. Marvel announced that Mark Wade and artist Neil Adams are going to work together on a new Fantastic Four series. The series wasn't given a length, but we, it, and that's mostly because Neil Adams is working on it, I believe. <laughs> um, we do not know when it'll come out, but it'll be later this year, and it's titled Fantastic Four Antithesis. Interesting. I, I mean, Mark Wade, Fantastic Four, I might even pick this up. This sounds pretty cool. So we'll get an issue every other month. Mm-hmm. We'll get to four, and they'll call that the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i i respect neil adams i respect his work i'm not a big fan of the the man behind the work but mm. he lately like he's is that batman raja ghoul thing finished i don't know like last i knew they were on issue three and yeah he's just too i don't i don't think you can get him to sit down on a series is the problem i mean does he i mean Correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't know his, his his current history. But I mean, does he need the money? <laughs> I, well, maybe. I mean, you know, every con you go to, Neil Adams is all over there. Like he's well, always yeah. has such a big presence at every comic con. But it's, now, I don't in know. this room somewhere, I have a signed Neil Adams um, Green Lantern Green Arrow trade. Yeah. So like, I've met him like two or three times. Like, right? He's almost at every con. So now there's no cons. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't need the money. Who knows? <laughs> maybe they'll get his act together but that was it like you always was, would see him at a con not drawing and you're like bro aren't you like aren't you drawing justice league right now what are you doing here <laughs> like who's finishing the justice league pages if you're signing on a- <laughs> the biggest story here is that he's doing a marvel book because my yeah. theory with neil adams because he's been doing these weird batman books forever that aren't right. continuity yeah and um my theory has been that like somebody at DC is just like, just give Neil his book because if we don't, he's going to cause trouble again. <laughs> yeah, and this so is just, what he's let, doing. just let him do his wacky Batman thing, and then just we'll kind of promote it and move on. Because anyone doesn't know Neil Adams is basically the reason that um, Simon and Schuster have 
any money or their family has any money. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, Marvel and Jonathan Hickman announced the start of the new X Men X of Swords event comic will be coming this September, titled X of Swords Creation. Oh, pronounced Ten of Swords. Okay. Yeah. So it's Ten of Swords, but it's an X in the title. Not confusing at all, people. Um, written by Jonathan Hickman, Teeny Howard, with art by Pepe Larraz. Pepe Larraz, my favorite name in comics. Yeah, what a great name. Um, so excited. So yeah. excited. Lots of swords, lots of Hickman. Sure. Listen, I'm convinced that Hickman is trolling us because when he sh- released that teaser of this mm-hmm. and it was just like everybody all the X Men holding swords with um, Xavier in the middle. Yeah. I was like, he's trolling us, but I don't care. It's probably going to be awesome. Yeah, and it's, I hope so too because I, I was excited. Listen, I don't. I'm not a huge X Men fan, but you put swords in their hands, like okay, maybe I'll read it. <laughs> uh, Boom Studios announced that they will be publishing publishing comics and graphic novels based on the series Dune, which is awesome. First up will be a 12 issue series adapting the prequel novel Dune, House Atreides, 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 followed by three graphic novels adapting the original Dune novel awesome because i was really getting into like i was starting to think about should i read the book or should i do an audiobook but now i'm just gonna do the comic fuck yes yeah dune nice. is awesome uh-huh. i've read most of dune there's a couple prequel novels i haven't read yep um uh all you dune nerds out there the house series is good so fuck off and I am so excited for some comics based on Dune, especially since we're getting a movie soon. Yeah, more Dune all the time. Saw some Dune. screens from it. Lots of uh, lots of famous actors wearing looks so good wearing wearing clothes. And it's just so perfect that the creators of the movie are like, we can't just do one movie. It's got to be multiple movies. We got to Lord of the Rings this. And I was like, yep, Lord of the Rings it. Give me four 18-hour movies, and I will watch them all. Yep. And uh, oh, this is awesome. Sean Murphy returning to creator own comics with the launch of his Indiegogo for The Plot Holes. Original graphic novel will feature a character jumping through multiple stories to fill in the plot holes. Sold. I'm going to Indiegogo after this to purchase that. Yeah. Already funded. And yeah. also the uh, poster image for it, like the the teaser image uh-huh. is he just like erased the bat ears off the batman images oh, that's and awesome. repurposed it it's kind of funny but uh <laughs> yeah sean murphy's awesome yeah what a what a guy um donny cates has announced that he and artist uh dylan burnett will be making a sequel to his breakout series god country at image later this year awesome god country is an amazing book uh amazing series check it out and that's really um, that's really what got Donny Kane's foot in the door for all this other crazy stuff he's doing. So, I think God Country is one of two of his books I haven't read. You should read it. It's got a I, giant sword. Yeah, um, that I really want to read. And the other one I actually bought and haven't read. The Paybacks was the other one I haven't. Um, Yen Press has announced that they will continue to be releasing manga adaptations of Star Wars properties. Later this year, they will release Star Wars Rebels based on the animated series and Star Wars Leia, Princess of Alderaan, an, adap- an adaptation of the, the novel with the same name. So that's pretty cool. They're doing that. I don't know if you've been checking those out. but I bought one of them. It wasn't the Luke one. It was, I forget, it's in a pile somewhere. Haven't read it yet, but um, I'm down. It'd bring me more Star Wars all the time. Put it in my uh, ears, mouth, and face. Uh, very sad news. Martin Pasco has passed away at the age of sixty-five. Um, just to just to touch on the stuff that Mark, Martin Pasco has done, he's he wrote a lot. He did DC, Marvel, Disney stuff. Uh, he was a TV writer for Roseanne, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Thunder the Barbarian, Batman the Animated Series, and also co-wrote Mask of the Phantasm by Batman, which to this day still the Batman the DC fans say is one of the best Batman movies of all time. And I really can't argue with that. It is fantastic. So, uh, yeah, rest in peace. And yeah. uh, legacy will live on because people still talk about that movie for sure. 
That movie's fantastic. I watched it recently to do a um, commentary track for it, and mm-hmm. it it holds up. It's so good. Yeah. And then um, if Tom King ever finishes it, his Bat and the Cat series will have Phantasm <laughs> in it as well. So right. that character lives on and is loved yep. by everybody. Um, 65, kind of young, but yeah. fuck, I went through his credits and... It was he a lot. Waste a single minute of that life, I'll tell you right. that much. For sure, he did. He did quite a bit. Um, just the, like the fact you write for like Roseanne, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then like Mask and Phantas- Phantasm, it's like, damn, that's a lot. But like a lot of you, I am a big Roseanne fan. Oh, yeah. Roseanne's great. That series is awesome. So yeah. kudos to him for writing for it. For sure. Um, then I guess we'll jump into what we're reading. I devoted all my time because I've been going through my stack of stuff talked about this a little bit with you I read die 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 um, it's it's the collector's first volume I picked this up I believe in Ohio when there's a big sale going on at a comic book shop um, this is I, I read all eight issues and it was it was really good uh, Chris Burnham art uh, and yeah so Scott Gimple Robert Kirkman this was that book we talked about a long time ago that um, was released to comic book shops without any solicitation. And it was like, oh shit, there's a Kirkman Burnham book uh, on the shelves with fantastic art. Um, It's basically, you know, a trio of triplets that are all uh, assassins that grow up as assassins. And there's this plot to kill the president who's Obama, which they do a little like tribute to Obama, like standing on a tank, which is pretty badass. Um, but there's like some other ridiculous like subplots going on in here that I really would love to explore if they ever release like another volume. I don't know if they've announced it like a sequel, um, but they do leave it as a cliffhanger. The art is amazing, very bloody, very over the top, almost like kick-ass style action and gore. Um, really great read. I was just like looking through my pile and like I got to read through this this weekend. This would be great. So yeah, that's a uh, amazing series. And a quick little anecdote about that: when I interviewed Chris Burnham at the uh, it wasn't Empire State Comic Con. I think it was Nickel City Comic Con 2017. He uh-huh. was drawing pages to that while I was talking to him. Uh-huh. I was like, what are you doing? He goes, I can't talk about it. And then <laughs> I recognized later on that they were it pages. Was die, 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 die. Yeah. Uh, of course. Yeah. But what did you read, Chris? Uh, let's see. I read... I'll start with the new... There's new comics, Mike. Look. Oh. New comics. Oh, man. Uh, so Justice League 44... Um, this is our new plot or story arc, and basically, mythical creatures come to Earth and start attacking things. One attacks Atlantis, a bunch attack the um parts of the world, and the Justice League comes and fights them. So it's Justice League versus giant mythical monsters. But what's big here is that they're trying to figure out why these monsters came because they're all um different creatures that the Themyscarians have trapped away years in the past and they can't find out not only why they're escaping but why they're so angry and when they finally defeat them all they're sitting around talking and they start bickering at each other and in the last page I'm going to spoil it everybody I'm going to spoil it the specter shows up oh nice Bam. I actually I actually have that ready to read I just completely forgot that we had comics this week because <laughs> I'm still reading Justice League a uh, okay issue, but that last page was just so good. Yeah, so the good. Reveal. Um, would, and then I got you, a, uh, really quick. Would you agree that like Venditti? Right, it's just a Justice League book, though. You know what I mean? It's not like it's not like the Scott Snyder like this. All oh, this multiverse is collapsing, and everybody space time continue. It's just like it's just a Justice League book, which is kind of refreshing. It's yeah, I I love Snyder and I love what he does, yeah. but I'm really hoping that after Death Metal, he kind of hits the reset button. Because yep. Snyder's whole career has been it's bigger, it's bigger, it's bigger, it's bigger, it's bigger. Yeah. And I think he needs to like bring it back down and like do like a whatever book, a cyborg book that's just like a personal story and not be trying to one up himself every time. Um because that yeah, near the end of that Justice League arc, it got kind of like, okay, this is just a crisis book. Like um but I'm sad that Vindy is leaving after the story. I'm really liking what he's doing. Um. So yeah, then I got Justice League Odyssey number twenty, and in this we get 
So I haven't talked about this book in a while because it was coming out during a weird time. But basically, Darkseid's trying to kill this new Justice League Odyssey. And he's sending all the old uh, members, Azrael, Cyborg, and uh, Starfire, who he's turned into his new, new gods, to kill them. And they end up killing him. Um, they end up coming attacking, and then this Justice League kills them. So this story here is about um, Jessica Cruz attempting to go back in the time to talk to her cohorts and say, like, don't don't go through with the plan, turn back, it fails, and you are um, discovered by Dark Side, and then she th- realizes that she can't get through them. And as soon as she comes back, uh, Cyborg reaches out to her and says, like, your transmission was within me, but I wasn't able to get a time, blah, blah, blah. But Dark Side is coming, and you need to destroy whatever it is you're doing because he's going to kill you all and steal it and use it for himself. And then Dark Side shows up. I love this book. If uh, you're not reading um, Just Sagasi, I think it's, I think it was better than Scott's run, um, what they were doing with Justice League and these specific characters was really great. And I'm just excited I got new comics this week. Yeah, um, I'm kind of waiting for that to get collected so I can read it all. Then I, I read uh, Batman the Cult number one, which is a Jim Starlin book with, I forget who does the art, but I'm going to look it up real quick if the internet will run faster. And I keep vamping. Yes, Bernie Wrightson is the artist on it. So in, in this, uh, Batman discovered, like, people are going missing in Gotham. He doesn't know what's going on. And Batman discovers there's like this cult in the sewers that's taking them and turning them into disciples of this guy who claims he's a god. Um, I really like this, the first issue. It shows a lot of what we talk about, but we don't see a lot with Batman, which is him being a detective. Um, and kind of going through like what this cult is all about. So I want to finish the series. I. I think I said it when I read Just League Odyssey, but I think that uh, Jim Starlin actually has a great handle on Batman, which is surprising because I know him for uh, cosmic stuff. Um, I read Another Dimension, number two, which is a continuation of that story where that kid tries to find a religion and it, like it's a religion that worships Nirvana. Um, it was weird. Like They finished the story in two issues and it kind of went nowhere. So it was a little disappointing. Yeah, that's sad. Um, like I said, it's two dollars for both issues. So if you want to check it out, um, but I thought there was more potential there than what the uh, writer gave it. Um, what has a ton of potential though is the Zombiful World of Oz number one. So this is a story that is a sequel to the Wizard of Oz, in which Dorothy has been placed in a mental asylum because everybody thinks she's crazy because she comes home talking about Oz. And she finally gets better, gets a job, creates a life for herself, and the Tin Man um, and the Scarecrow and all them come back and try to get her to come back to Oz because zombies have taken over Oz, and they're starting to come over to Kansas. Um, I really liked it, actually. It was cool because all the Kansas stuff is done in black and white, and then all the Oz stuff is done in color. Um they redesign all the characters so they don't look like the movies, but they also have like a sequence where like, well, you know, it has been like 10 years, no longer a child, and we're no longer who we used to be. Um, and obviously the Wicked Witch of the West has something to do with it as well because the flying monkeys appear at one point. I I think this is a cool first issue of the series. It has a lot of potential. Um, so I definitely recommend checking that out. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So, Mike, where can people find you on the internet? They can find me at Fortress Ripper on Twitter. Where can they find you and or the show and all the stuff that Chris Runt is doing? Well, you can find the show at FortressComicNews.com. Uh, that's where we post everything we do right there on that handy-dandy website. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Fortress Chris. And if you want to keep up with everything I'm doing, you can go to ChrisRunt.com. Um, and everything I do is posted there, um, as well as you can sign up for my newsletter. Um, as well um, if you're listening to us give us a five star review it helps us reach more ears and it makes Mike a happy camper yep. uh, <laughs> sure. if you're watching us on the YouTube 
like, subscribe, share, and comment down below because we want to hear from you, and that also helps us reach more ears. Smoke, I think that's everything we have for this week. Sounds good. Thanks, y'all, for listening. We'll see you all next week.